Antons, who served as a member of the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee from 2006 to 2011, and David Laws, a former Chief Secretary to the Treasury and advisor to GK Strategy. So, Andrew, good evening to you. We'll start with you first. You think the Bank of England was right to raise rates? Yes, certainly right to raise rates. Like Ken Clark, I think they could have done it some time ago. Um, and I'm really um, thinking that the cut that they made last year was perhaps not really necessary. But we have to get this in context. It only takes interest rates back to where they were for seven years until the middle of 2016. So we've yet to really get into a genuine rate rising cycle uh, post the financial crisis. So then the real test is what the Bank of England does next. All right, David Laws, you wrote yesterday that the bank should sit on its hands and wait for a while. Are you pretty disappointed? I'm not surprised because this was well sort of expected, but I do think that it might have been sensible to wait a few more months. Uh, a quarter percent here or there, as Andrew has just suggested, is not a huge issue. But the important thing is, have we turned the corner on rates? Is this the first of a series of rate moves at a time when real incomes are still shrinking? There's a lot of uncertainty about the Brexit process. So I'd rather take the same view as two of the deputy governors appear to have done today, uh, Sir Dave Ramsden and Sir John Cunliffe, that actually waiting a little bit further to see whether the economy is continuing to soften uh, would probably have been a sensible thing to do. Was there, had the bank boxed itself in, though? I mean, they've guided towards interest rate rises so many times in the past and then never followed through with it. Were they boxed in at all? Yeah, it, these days there is a lot more openness about monetary policy, and in some senses that's a good thing. The risk is when... Um, monetary policy makers start to speculate too much about what they're going to do at future meetings. And they did seem to have got themselves very boxed in today, having sent very contradictory messages over the last few months. And many people were saying their credibility would be on the line if they didn't do that. That's not a good place to be. And a little bit more care about some of the signals that are sent out would be sensible. Sometimes it makes sense as a monetary policy maker to retain flexibility so you can respond to the latest economic information coming in, particularly at turning points in interest rates, which are really critical things to get right. Oh, well, Andrew, you are a former policymaker. I mean, uh, where do you think the, the future trend is now? What's going to be the pace at which rates go higher here? I mean, the market's been all over the place today on this one. Yes, I think uh, advocates of interest rate rises like myself recognise that the process needs to be slow and gradual. And I think that's one of the arguments for starting it uh, perhaps earlier than some people might ideally have liked or might have expected. Um, and we have to recognise that there are some benefits to the economy from uh, pushing up interest rates, as Mark Carney indicated. It should strengthen the pound, and at the moment the weakness of the pound is one of the factors squeezing consumer spending and squeezing growth. So it's not clear to me that actually gradual rises in interest rates will really harm the growth of the economy. And we've seen in the United States where they've raised rates gradually that hasn't really harmed the growth of the economy there. So, Andrew, what do you make of this reaction from the TUC, then? Last thing hard press families can afford. Well, I think it's, um, it's always difficult um, to raise interest rates. It always seemed to me, when I was on the MPC, that it was, it was easier to cut them than to raise them, and there's always going to be some reaction. But I think the TUC need to recognise that the Bank of England is there to do a job, they're to, there to, to control inflation. And the long-term health of the economy does require us to have a higher level of interest rates than this emergency level that we've had since the financial crisis. So I think if I'm correct and growth isn't really badly hit uh, by this uh, rise in interest rates, then perhaps those fears uh, will be misplaced. Uh, Dave, very interestingly, the two people who voted against a rate rise, you said it just now, the two ex-Treasury guys, John Cunliffe and Dave Ramsden, What's the, what does this mean for the budget? Is, you know, the Bank of England has had very loose monetary policy while the Treasury's run hard on austerity. Is that all over now? Well, there has been this sort of implicit pact, really, between the Bank and the Treasury over the last sort of five, six, seven years that they'd run... The Treasury would run a tight fiscal policy, you know, bearing down on spending with some increases in tax in order to balance the books, while the Bank would run a very easy monetary policy... We know there are some concerns that Philip Hammond is going to be projecting some bigger deficits in future years because of the productivity problem, which might require some more fiscal action. It might even require some tax increases. Uh, the, there will be some tensions here, I think, about the fact that the bank is starting to withdraw some of the monetary easing 
without yeah. us really being clear what the Treasury are going to do next. Okay, we'll leave it there, I'm afraid. David Laws, thanks for joining me here Thank in the you. studio. And Andrew Sentence in your